Hi, welcome to this short video lecture. We're going to be solving a problem on heat exchangers using the effectiveness NTU method. The problem reads, two fluids A and B enter a very long co-current flow concentric tube heat exchanger under the conditions listed in the table below. The process is at steady state. What is the outlet temperature of fluid A? How much heat is transferred between the two fluids in watts? So there are actually a couple of different ways of solving this. We've solved this before in a separate video lecture and you can find the link to that in the video description below. But today we're going to use this effectiveness NTU method. So the first thing to notice is that this is a very long heat exchanger and also that it's a co-current flow heat exchanger. So very long leads us, even though we aren't given what U is, we can assume that this product goes to infinity, assuming that U is a finite number and the surface area is just really, really big. So what we can do is we can look up what the effectiveness of this heat exchanger would be in these tables. So the effectiveness is given as a function of the number of transfer units. It's essentially a dimensionless size of the heat exchanger. And CR, which is the ratio of the heat capacity rates of our two fluids. So the first step would be to look through the various configurations and find the relationship that meets that matches our problem. So this is a co-current flow heat exchanger which is the same as a parallel flow heat exchanger which means we're going to want a relationship of this form. So this is this is the relationship that we'll use. We'll go back to the exam problem. So we can actually calculate what the effectiveness of the heat exchanger would be and we would plug in because our U times surface area is infinity, our number of NTUs, which is defined as U times surface area divided by M dot CP of our minimum fluid, that is also infinite. So when we plug that into our effectiveness relationship, we get 1 minus E to the minus NTU times 1 plus CR all divided by 1 plus CR. So because our heat exchanger size is infinite basically, this goes away and we get our effectiveness is just 1 over 1 plus CR. So our CR is defined as this minimum heat capacity rate divided by the maximum heat capacity rate which is M dot CP min divided by m dot cp max. So if when just looking by inspection and doing some estimates in our heads, we can see that when we multiply these two things together for fluid A, we're getting a number of about 5,000 watts per Kelvin. And for fluid B, we're getting a number more like 12,000. So our fluid A is our minimum heat capacity rate. So to get our CR, we would plug in these numbers. 1230 multiplied by 4 and 3976 multiplied by 3 and we end up with this heat capacity rate ratio of 0 0.412. We plug that in here and we get that our effectiveness is equal to 1 over 1 plus 0 0.412 which is 0 0.708. So what this means is that the temperature change that will be undergone by our minimum fluid will be 70.8% of the maximum possible temperature change that it could undergo, which would be taking our cold fluid from its inlet temperature all the way up to the inlet temperature of our hot fluid. So our cold fluid is fluid A and our hot fluid is fluid B. So let's list out what that effectiveness means. So we have a number for our effectiveness. Now we need to relate that to the relative temperature changes of our fluids. So our effectiveness is defined as Q over Q max, where Q will use the fluid A definition of Q. So M dot CP A times our, because A is our cold fluid, we're going to do outlet minus our inlet. So that's how much heat our heat exchanger would actually transfer. And the maximum possible amount of heat that our heat exchanger could transfer if it were designed differently would be M dot CP, we'd put the minimum fluid here, which is fluid A. And this is our hot fluid inlet temperature, which is TB in 
minus our cold fluid tem inlet temperature, which is Ta in. So because um, because we get the same ratio, this ends up just being what's the relative temperature change of fluid A um, relative to the maximum possible temperature change it could undergo. So now if we solve this for Ta out, which is what we're really looking for, we get Ta out is equal to our effectiveness times Tb in minus Ta in plus Ta in. So our effectiveness was 0 0.708. Tb in was 215 degrees Celsius, Ta in was 80 degrees Celsius. So that leaves us with a temperature of 175.6 degrees Celsius. And if you do compare to the other problem that we solved, you'll find that this is the exact same number we got in the previous problem. So this problem also asks how much heat is transferred between the two fluids. So now this is pretty trivial. Now we just take this same definition and plug in numbers for to get our Q. So Q is equal to M dot CP fluid A times TA out minus TA in. I'll spare you the, the plug and chug part of this problem, but we end up with 470,200 watts or 470 kilowatts. So here's our answer to part A and here's our answer to part B and you'll find that these numbers match exactly with the other method that we used to solve this which is just doing a simpler energy balance.